We are together with uh, Bradley Glenn Lewis, uh, president of the American Waldesian Society and member of the Reformed Church in America. Good morning. Good morning. On the 20th of June, uh, the Presbyterian Church in America became the most prominent uh, religious group in the US to endorse uh, divestment, uh, divestment as a protest against Israeli policies towards Palestinians. But the debate about these politics uh, is active also in the other Protestant churches. Yes, yes, that is the case. It is. It is. We have been very interested, although we have not done that, we have been very interested in the Israel-Palestine issues. Well, and the um, RCA didn't issue similar decisions, didn't it? Uh, yes, do you mean has it, has it taken stands? Uh, not in terms of divestment, but we have been very interested, uh, for example, in our ecumenical programs. Uh, we invited Mitri Reheb uh, to talk to us about the Palestinian Christians dilemma several years ago. Uh, and we also are working with World Vision on improving the economic prospects for the Palestinians. So uh, we have definitely been following this and have been interested in it, but we have not taken the kind of action that the PCUSA took. Okay, and uh, specifically what kind of actions have you taken in the last uh, year, more or less? I don't think that we've had any official resolutions that I know of Um, and, and we certainly did not have some kind of major debate at the Synod. Um, what I would say is that we, that we have, for example, a workshop that involved some people from World Vision uh, who had discussions with a group of interested people at the RCA Synod concerning uh, efforts to improve the very difficult economic situation of Palestinian communities. And of course, we also are very concerned about the situation with Palestinian Christians who are, are caught in the middle of this and have been for some time. So our general concern would be to improve both relations and the economic condition of the Palestinians. And of course, we like everyone else hope for peace in the Middle East. We have not chosen to take the uh, option that the Presbyterians did. Yes, and why did you decide to don't uh, make a boycott actions? Um, in one sense, that's in, in one sense saying why somebody didn't is an is an interesting and complex question, um, and and so I, I can't really presume to speak for everyone in the RCA. Um, I think that we have, have felt that we should try to work with partners like World Vision uh, to improve conditions. We have certainly had a chance for our officials to visit over there. Uh, and so um, we, we, have, we have wanted to send the message uh, that, we, that we hope for a different situation than we have now. Um, but um, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a really big step to try to go to, to do something like divestment. And uh, things like that often have unintended consequences. <laughs> And so I think that that is, is something that probably Uh, is is um, an issue in the minds of a lot of people in the RCA. Let me point out, we were, I think, the first religious denomination to break with the Dutch Reformed Church in South Africa uh, with respect to that. And, and at that point, our, our church simply believed that it could not Um, that it could not stay neutral on that and that we needed to take a side, that we needed to, to say to the, Dutch, the white Dutch Reformed Church that we believed that their theology was wrong in supporting apartheid and that we had to support the efforts 
uh, for freedom for the black population and then do apartheid. And actually that led eventually um, and indirectly to our having adopted the Belhar Confession as our fourth confessional document, our fourth constitutional document. But that, of course, was an extremely clear, extremely important thing that, that we did where we felt that that really was the only option. I was not at the national level of the RCA at the time, but I am familiar uh, as a parishioner and also having talked to officials about how that occurred. Um, I would say that, that our denomination for quite a while has worked with multiple partners, both within the Christian world and elsewhere. That has been one of the things that we've done for a long time. Uh, and, and so, if I had to guess, probably our instincts are to keep working with people and to have dialogues and to try to inform people in the church. Uh, and so we, we have tended to do that. And even in the ecumenical realm, we have tended to work with lots of partners, even if we don't agree with them on everything. So as best I could say, um, and without attempting to, to speak, shall we say, ex cathedra, because I can't, only the General Synod can make a decision of that sort, I would say that, that we tend to try to be heavily involved in these things and to do what we can, but we tend to continue to work with a lot of partners more often than some churches would. Thank you to Bradley Glenn Lewis, president of the American World Asian Society. Thank you very much. I appreciate being here and uh, this opportunity to talk.